Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Links River Talk. Yep, we have a very special interview today with Annette Lowe. And, um, she played none other than our original Sylvie Lebret in Season 1, Episode 10. Yep, so without further ado, let's get into it. Enjoy! So yeah, as far as we can tell, North of 60 was your first and only acting job. Is that, is that true? Um, or? Well, not really. Oh, okay. I, um, before getting on North of 60, I did um, live theater. Oh, okay. okay. So it's not television. Yeah, it's not television, but it was, um, yeah, some performance. There. That would be interesting. Mm -hmm. So where did you do that? Well, the, the way, uh, let me just start because I need to situate myself. So I'm a Northern Dene, Norwegian, French woman. Okay. And I'm from, my mom, my matrilineal line, which is my mother, uh, stems from the Northwest Territories. Wow. Oh. So my, my grandfather was Chief Joseph Norwegian up from the Dacho area. Oh, wow. And when I got involved in North of Six, I was in Calgary, going to the University of Calgary. Oh, yeah. So, um, it's like Creator put me in the right spot at the right time, because I wasn't planning on a career at all, or, or you know, in television. And the casting director kept encouraging me, and I said, hold on, hold on, I'm doing my degree, I'm going to focus on my degree. And then I was invited to the opening night in, in Brent Creek. For the first episode ever and then the, the other casting director saw me and said approached me and said you know we're we're, we're looking for a metis woman oh, and yeah. we're looking for somebody who looks like you and and i thought that was really neat because in my background because i'm northern Dene, mm -hmm. norwegian and french that's absolutely the look that yeah. they needed and the look that i have and it's interesting because the role in North, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but um, so I was asked by the casting director then if I would try out for this role, and again I said no, I'm really focused on my studies, mm -hmm. and they said um, we we would like to have you try out. So I said, well, what does that look like? And they said, can you come Monday? And this was Saturday, <laughs> so I said, sure, <laughs> sure, right? Like this, okay, I'm yeah. here. It feels right. Uh, and I went Monday, and then that week we we did the the work needed and um, did the cuts, and it was very easy for me. Mm -hmm. um, and it felt like a dream, really. <laughs> oh yeah. It, it just fell into place, pop, 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 and then it fell into place, and it was so neat to to have that experience because um, when you do performance, live performances, mm -hmm. it's a lot different. The television, uh -huh. and um, that so that that was very special in my mind. And another thing that happened there was that my mother is Mary Rose Lowe. She's my matrilineal tie to the Dene country. Mm -hmm. and she was in the next episode. Oh wow! Oh, really? We didn't yeah. know that. That is super yeah. cool. So if you look, you know, on the list, you'll see Mary Rose Lowe. That's my mother. What and, role um, did so she, she play? Played, she was an elder. Oh yeah. Go figure, right? She, she is an elder, so they, she was a, she played an elder. And, awesome. Um, <laughs> so, um, Lisa M wanted to know how come you were just there for the one episode and you didn't end up coming back. I kind of wondered that too, but not. Was, I ended my um, degree that mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. and I moved back home to help take care of my mom. Oh, yeah. So I wasn't in Calgary anymore. Mm. So I ended up going back up north to take care of my mom. And it was kind of her taking care of me too, because <laughs> when you're away for, from your family and your parents, she was my, my main parent, she was the one who raised me. Uh -huh. And um, so ended up going back there, ended up writing her book of memoirs. Oh, wow. Took that small community of Fort Nelson, BC. And that community is like Blinks River. Oh, wow. In that, there's a mix, right? There's a mix of different cultures and personalities, uh -huh. and everyone comes together to help each other, and everyone has a role. Oh, that's great. So 
I guess for me, this this role as Sylvia the Rat was just an extension of who I am mm -hmm. and the community that I grew up in, the way I dressed, the way I spoke, the, the way things were. And, and being this lady of uh, mixed blood mm -hmm. that um, doesn't quite fit in the white man's world or the native world, but mm -hmm. that in between, yeah. that's who I am. Uh -huh. And that's been a constant throughout my life. Well, I'm glad you mentioned it because um, so, uh, I was wondering if you actually were Métis. So, you know, it, uh, I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, are you in contact with any of the cast members still? It's like Buffalo Child who played your husband or Tom Jackson who played your lover. <laughs> <laughs> because again, my life took that spin, and I went uh -huh. up north, mm -hmm. and I began my my life up there, and they continued in acting. So yeah, unfortunately not. That's how things go, right? Yeah. <laughs> how was it to play such a kind of scan that scandalous role, though, too? It was um, exciting. <laughs> and there was some like tenacious nature to it because because it was a scandalous thing mm -hmm. a, a role and, it, and then she just comes into the community and it leaves yeah kind of like a mysteriousness mm -hmm. her. And, and, and going back to my home community I, I was teased quite a bit well not quite a bit but they would say oh Sylvie <laughs> <laughs> and um, make uh, like little jokes but um, yeah, it was all in good humor. It wasn't malicious at all. Oh, that's good. Yeah, well, it definitely was an interesting role because of that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What have you been up to since leaving North of 60? So, I did move back up north mm -hmm. to my mm -hmm. small town. And then, like I said, um, took time with my mom, wrote her book, Memoirs, uh -huh. and uh, uh, self-published that book. Oh wow! And and again, amazing. yeah, and then it sold out within the year, so I'm I'm still wow. it's still on my back burner to do a second printing. Oh wow! Uh, what it, what was it called? It's called um, Volume One: History of Northeastern BC and Memoirs from Mary Rose Lowe. Oh, okay. We'll definitely have to look out for that. So, her history is that she she was um, married my Norwegian father and then moved to Port Nelson mm -hmm. from the Northwest Territory and oh. a big forest fire burnt them out to go to this place so oh, wow. when I was born I'm the youngest of 11. <laughs> Holy That's a big family. <laughs> <laughs> that is a big family. So I'm the youngest of 11 and, and I, I think some of my siblings say oh well you got the most attention with mom. Well go figure right I was the mm -hmm. last one so typically yeah. you, you do get a little bit more time. And, and so what we did was um, she journaled it in this home or this house that we grew up. It was like the heart of the community and people would come there for counseling. <laughs> she was also an interpreter for the ports. Oh, wow. And she was, she, she kept the weather, like the, there was this big, huge book. I remember this big, huge book on the table. And every day for 30 years, she kept track of the weather for Environment Canada. <laughs> That's wow. amazing. And, we had those little um, things outside. It was like a little uh, uh, container that you trapped the rain in, and then you <gasps> yeah, I remember it. those things. Right? My great yeah, grandma just, used to just, have one. Oh, okay. So she did that for all these years, and then um, she also did a radio program. Oh. So I would be her helper B, and <laughs> Sundays at one o'clock she would go on the air, Mary Rose Low Hour, and so during the week people would call our home with. Um, you know, request saying, could you send this out to um, the family, the McDonald family on Beaver River and wow. send this on to them, tell them this message. And then she would play this on the airways. And in some of those communities, they didn't have radios, but yeah. they had bush radios. Oh, yeah. So they would turn on their bush radio with their generator for the one hour on Sundays because they would get these messages. And Oh, wow. So that was a way of kind of spreading messages from town to town, right? Yeah, town to town. 
And then she also spoke Dene, which is the or this lady, which is the Dene dialect. Mm -hmm. And so it was, um, you know, there was some music, there were some messages, there were some forms and passed on. Wow. And, and this went over for 23 years. She had this radio program. So this is what I grew up with. So when I went back, she had journals. Our house was very busy, people would come visit. Uh -huh. And everyone would write in the journal of who they were, where they came, from what they were doing. And in the middle of that, we would write her historical memoirs and the history that of is a, when she came to this place. That is absolutely amazing. Isn't that cool? Yeah. yeah. So I have her file boxes of journals tucked away in a safe place. And what I did was went through that with her. Took the, um, yeah, took some time off work, went through that, and then you know, pulled together the work on the old Fort Nelson. And so it, she had that written down, and then I would ask her questions, and then she would add to that. Wow. So I compiled her book, and she had pictures. She was also the one with the uh, camera, and there's not a lot of people who had cameras back then. Oh, yeah. So it's, yeah, this book is a culmination of her journals and the photographs that she uh, took in the well, video. the photos would be really something to look at, eh? Ah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're really neat. So I did that, and then um, before that, I, I was scooped up by government. So oh. I went back, and during the time I was going to university, every, you know, summer I'd come back, I would get a summer job with Forestry. Mm -hmm. And it started there. And then I went into the mapping department. I worked at the Forest Service for five years. Mm -hmm. Then I went over to the Oil and Gas Commission for 18 years. Mm -hmm. And now I'm with the Ministry of Indigenous Relations and Reconciliation. Oh, awesome. And a major theme throughout all that is um, healing, providing support to the communities, and finding a way that government can work with Indigenous communities a better way. Oh, uh, yeah, that, well, that's really important, obviously. Mm -hmm. So that's been, what, 26 years, about? And so now I'm reaching this point in my life where I'm thinking, you know, I've committed 26 years of my life to the public service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got married and I had two sons in the middle of that, supported my mom, and she's passed on away. She's passed on now. Mm -hmm. And now I hear from you, and it just revives this creative spirit in me, thinking, hmm, you know, what will the next chapter of my life hold? Well, that's great. <laughs> and we've got so much time during this quarantine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So w what I did was, because of this healing and wellness to communities is so important to me, I, I do have um, a strong spirit, because my son had a tragic accident about seven years ago and which forced us to move from that northern town and I had to relocate to Kelowna to oh, get him medical care. That's too bad. Wow. And when you go through something like that, it builds you up mm -hmm. and it makes you really strong because that's just when you go through hardship, it makes you a stronger person. Yeah. And that has resulted in both me and him and, and his brother. And um, so we live in Kelowna right now. And to give back, that has always been a theme too, is give back to the community that I live in. Mm -hmm. So I uh, went online before COVID. I didn't even you know this was before COVID was thought of. And um, my spiritual name is White Proud Woman. Oh. So on Facebook, there's it says T with White Cloud Woman. Mm -hmm. And I was um, hosting weekly sessions with whoever wanted to join me for tea. Oh, that's so oh, neat. Nice. Yeah, and sharing wellness and sharing a little bit of history of my mom's book. And um, it's a great just, idea. You know, help, helpful tools for people who are also struggling and, and need to find something, some hope. Uh -huh. So, yeah, yeah, that's a great that's, idea. I mean, a lot of people could use that, I'm sure, especially even now, right, because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, we're 
I guess you were never asked to come back. You never were in touch with the show at all after that. Or no, no, I wasn't. They might have lost track of me because I did move. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think they mostly, uh -huh. from what we have heard, they were mostly um, dealing with actors from the Calgary area. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. During the year here, there's apples, cherries growing here. Oh wow. This is the land of where they get their cherries and wine from. Oh man. It's a lot different than growing up north though. It's almost like a desert type. Yeah. Very oh, dry yeah. and desert. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm thinking for this next uh, chapter in my journey is mm -hmm. because I have given 26 years or committed 26 years to government mm -hmm. and I've given them a lot mm -hmm. right I've given them a lot yeah. so I'm thinking okay now I can retire perhaps I'll retire and I'll redo that book I'll do the second printing and then I'll get her tapes and I think they're through um Heritage Canada mm -hmm. Cultural Heritage Canada there's some grants for um language and mm -hmm. culture okay so I might be able to segue into that and yeah that, that yeah that would definitely be a good idea you want to kind of release them as a series type thing why not yeah uh, well right? they'd be incredible uh, right yeah uh, do you so want to meet my one son sure just of course, came in. Of course we would. Come on. these are uh people doing interviews with old hello hi hey, nice to meet you this is sylvie the brett's son <laughs> <laughs> Chris, you really look different all grown up. <laughs> yeah, his name is Arn. A R N E. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice yeah. to meet you. Chris was the name of her son on the show, not. <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> that was my joke. Well, thank you again so much. Yeah, it was really great to okay. meet you. Thanks a lot. Have a good evening. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Take care.